for this I give to praise. Praise your name. Oh, we love you. Always the same. Say it, say it, say it. Hallelujah. For this I give. What about that car accident you almost had? What about when he moved all the traffic out of the way? What about that disconnection notice that you got, but yet the lights are still on? What about the doctor's diagnosis that says you should be gone, but here you are right now? I'm talking about something to praise you for. They were laying off the whole department, but you got a promotion. What about that crisis? What about that calamity that you suffered that you never thought you'd be able to get through and yet you're in this room right now standing on your own two feet knowing that if he did it yesterday, he'll do it today, he'll do it tomorrow. Go ahead and give your God some praise for this, for this, for this, for this. I give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just bow our heads and let's just praise him right now. What an honor. What a privilege to be in your presence. the joy that we experience at your feet. The love that we encounter from your throne. We don't come with high hearts, haughty hearts, arrogant attitude. We come with humility in the presence of deity. Recognizing that you are sovereign and in control realizing that you have our destiny in your hand. Always have, always will. That you are working out what we can't even see. That when we sleep and slumber, you never do. How we thank you and how we praise you and how we worship you and how we love you. We have so much to thank you for. The food that we eat, the clothes on our back, the roof over our head, the friends that we have, the church that we attend, the job that we go to, the money that we have in a bank, the love of our brother, the love of our sister. We have so much to be thankful for. We just want to praise you. We want to praise you. No matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, you are worthy of praise. For this, we give you praise. Every mountain, every trial, every blessing. Hallelujah. For this, we give you praise. Have your way today. Say what you want said. Do what you want done. Lord, these are your people. You love them more than I do. Father, this is your word. You know it much better than I ever will. I'm a vessel, not the best vessel, but God a willing vessel. Have your way in me, do what you want done, say what you want said, but above all I pray that you and you alone will be glorified. This I ask, this I ask to the one who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask, this I ask in your name, amen and amen. You may be seated in God's house. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, brother. 
the song was so appropriate for every mountain. You brought me over for every trial. You've seen me through for every blessing. The response is hallelujah. <laughs> for this I give you praise. You see, you praise God because you trust him. Our existence is all about trust. You can't be a Christian and not be about trust. When we place our faith, our trust in Jesus Christ as Savior, it meant that we fully believe that he being innocent of any crime, on the cross at Calvary, he paid the price for our sinful crimes before God. You see, trust, when we trust in Jesus as Savior, it means that we believe that he was buried in a tomb, and just like he said, that he rose to life again on the third day because he keeps his promises. We put faith in the facts, the facts that Jesus said, I will rise again. Putting your trust in Jesus as Savior means that all of our sins are forever satisfied. They're forever paid. They're never to be held against us because of the awesome, loving work that Jesus did for us on the cross. Trust, believe, dependence, reliance on that fact is what makes you a Christian. To trust in Jesus as Savior means we accept him as the Lord of our life. All right, there wasn't, wasn't, wasn't as many amens as it was on the Savior now. You see, this means, as, as Lord of your life, this means that we no longer live our life the way we used to live listening to our own selves, listening to the world, or listening to the devil. It means that we now follow the lead of the Lord Jesus. It means he tells us how to live, and he gives us the power to obey his commands. Because we trust him as Savior, forgiver of our sins, and Lord, the one in control of our life, the Bible says we have a new identity. We were once enemies of God. I'm not going to tell you to look at your neighbor, slap your neighbor, give your neighbor a high five, bump your neighbor, lay on your neighbor, none of that right now. I, you know, I thought about, you know, I thought about elder at the offering. I thought about reach your hand in your neighbor's wallet and get out an offering. <laughs> we'll never do that, but we should try. <laughs> we have a new identity. We were once enemies of God. I want that to sink in. We were once, and if you are not a believer in Christ Jesus, you are still an enemy of God. Don't get it twisted now. God is a God of justice. He's a God of grace. But if you're not with him, you are against him. We were once enemies, the Bible said, but because of Christ, because of Christ, I'm trying to let it sink in with somebody, because of Christ, the Bible says we are at peace with God. Formerly enemies, now at peace. Why? Because we believed in Christ. We trusted in Christ. Let's look at a Bible passage that validates that truth. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we have now been made right, we've been made right, not that we are right, we've been made right in God's sight. How? By faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. Now you can look at your neighbor. Say, by faith. by faith. All right. By faith, we have what? Peace with God. What did I say? We be before we were with, uh, believed in Christ, we were what? But now we have peace with God. God, because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Now, back in Ohio, I would prompt people but say to say something like this, ain't it that good news? Yeah, yeah. Come on, practice that. Ain't it that good news? Yeah, you can say that up in the house of the Lord. It's all right. All this happened because God revealed truth about himself, and we believed it. Yeah, it, it, it's the faith that made the difference. Thank God we have peace with God. 
We're no longer enemies. But the Bible teaches us that we can also have another kind of God's wonderful peace. And in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it is called the peace of God. Peace with God, no longer an enemy. So peace of God is distinctively different. The peace proclaimed in Philippians 4 speaks of about a confidence, a comfort, and an assuredness that no matter what we face in this life, God your Lord, God your Savior, God who loves you is in control. Yeah. Or oh, your life might be spinning right about now. Uh, you might have trials that you, you really haven't told any about right now. You might be experiencing something that you say, how in the world can God be in control? I'm here to tell you that a preacher from a prison cell wrote a letter to some people who were free and said, God has got your back. He's in control. I want you to have peace of God. And so I want to take a little time and look at some scriptures today and give you some others that will help encourage and fortify you so that you can have the assuredness that God is in control. But just like peace with God was based on our belief, so the peace of God is grounded in trust as well. One of the most tragic things that I have personally experienced and have seen in the lives of other Christians is that we can believe God to save us from all of our nasty, rotten, wicked, okay, me. He can save me from all of my nasty, rotten, wicked sin, but we don't always believe that he can bring us out of a sticky, scary circumstance. He got that cross thing down pat, but I don't know if he understands what's going on right here today. I, I'm, I'm going to bring up a video in just a second, but I thought about, I thought about some words. Now, you, you got to help me because I used to, I used to, I come from Ohio, and back in Ohio, I, I was raised on hymns. I, I, I've known hymns and since, uh, since I was a little fellow. Before I knew earth, wind, and fire, I knew about God's holy fire. <laughs> Joseph Scriven wrote in the 1800s a, 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 a song that says, that's titled, What a Friend we have in Jesus. I thought about singing it, but I said, this is a new age. This is, this is a new age. This is a young church. I don't know if they can go back and get that with me. I know a few of y'all might. What a friend we have. I was about to break it out, but I said, no. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Don't encourage. Y'all know Pastor Rice is the singing preacher, so don't even start. Y'all want to embarrass me up here. What a friend we have in Jesus. But listen to the words because here's what the, the songwriter is accusing us who stop short of trusting God all the way. Listen to what he said. He says, oh, what, what? See, some of you know that song. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. It's ours to have, but oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry Everything. Did I say some things? Oh, you take some things. But it says everything in the song, everything to God in prayer. The songwriter says we need to take everything to God in prayer. We often take some things, but can you trust God with all things? How about that really big thing that's keeping you up at night? That Goliath of a thing that makes you call in sick. Stay on your stay stay in stay in and keep your pajamas on all day. Laying on the couch with all the blinds closed, got your half gallon of Rocky Road and your chocolate chip dipping sticks. And a bag of Oreos on the side. That thing that won't let you sleep at night when you're tossing and turning. When you get up, it looks like you in the bed been in a wrestling match. I'm talking about that thing. That Goliath of a problem, the one that, one that stops you, you don't even want to go outside and face the sunshiny day. What about that thing? Can you trust him with that? Yeah, ouch is the right response. You see, we're willing to trust God with some things, but are we really willing to trust God with all things? 
The Bible says this in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by the girl in the video, when she saw things, she had some confidence. She had an experience, and she had a small step, and that was great. But then when God was asking her to trust him for a large thing, she said no. Folks, if you're a Christian, your whole life is about trust. If you're a believer in Christ Jesus, it's all about dependence. What you can see, what you can't see. We are people of time. We see things as they march on second by second. Our God is eternal. He sees it all at the same time. He knows the beginning and the end. He knows how that thing is going to work out. We have got to trust him with everything. We've got every experience we face, everything that comes our way. We've got to to trust God. Somebody say yes. yes. Say yes. yes. Say yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta encourage yourself. You gotta practice that thing. But let's, let's stand on some principles. Let's stand on some truth. Romans chapter 8, 28. You've heard me preach it before. You've heard Pastor preach it. We've been quoting it. But you need to hear it again today. It says, for we know that some things, for we know that most things, for we know that every now and then things, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. You know, this is a very famous passage of scripture. We like to quote it when other people are going through. <laughs> Can I preach in here today? What? Oh, my Lord. That's, oh, child, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But when it's your turn, don't bring, don't be bringing that, don't bring. <laughs> if it was good for your neighbor, if it's good for mom and them, it's certainly good for you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with half a portion oh. on the good days oh. when things are run well. Oh. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with how much? Oh. Of your heart. Do not, do not depend on your own understanding. Didn't say don't use it. It said don't depend on it. Verse 6 says, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. I've told people this plenty of times. When I, get, when I get stuck, I have to turn this into a prayer and say, Lord, I trust you. Show me which way to go. See, you can say that behind the steering wheel. Lord, I trust you. Show me which way to go. You say, I'm not allowed to read the Bible on my job. Well, it's in my mind. Lord, I trust you. Show me which way to go. When I'm standing in, 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 in front of a, 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 a serious circumstance, Lord, I trust you. Show me which way to go. If he says fall back, what should you say? Yeah, I trust you. See, I don't know who's in the room today. But I believe that somebody needs to stop trying to work things out. What God has told you to pray about so that you can stop worrying about it. In fact, the message title, I, I stuck it in the middle. The message title is, don't worry about what God says, pray about. Say that with me. Don't worry about what God says, pray about. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So let us re-examine for some, become familiar with for others, and commit to memorization the truth of God's word that when we believe it and apply it will give us the very peace of God. And so I want to take, take the time to go now to Philippians chapter 4, and I want to bring out two points, two points here. Uh, the first point I want to make is stop worrying about what you should be praying about. The second point I want to bring out is replace humanistic principles with God's promises. So let's start at the first point, and we'll go with point number one. Stop worrying about what you should be praying about. Stop worrying about what you should be praying about. Stop worrying about what you should be praying about. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 
through 7 reads this way from the New Living Translation. Don't worry about... You, you, you see, I'm trying to get you to use these words because I want them to sink in your spirit so that now when you go through a crisis, it doesn't matter what the thing is, it's a part of any, and you will, you will obey God's holy word. So I'm going to read it again. Don't worry about instead see there's something to do there's that, that's what you don't do this is what you should do instead pray about some things most things a few things you are to pray about everything so now for some of y'all say you know i don't know how to pray i don't know what to pray for how many of y'all got some things in your life Guess what? Got some notes of some stuff to pray about now, don't you? The Bible says you pray about everything. You tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not enough just to go it's not enough just to go to God in prayer and make a request. I didn't say a command. I, I want to step off for just a second and say, I don't know what TV, t TV preachers and so forth, you're watching all that kind of care and all that, I don't know. But I do know this, that I've read the Bible. I've never seen what the Bible said. God said you can command, demand him to do anything. I'm going to preach whether you like it or not. He didn't say you can demand him. God, I say such and such unto you. I'm scared to even use that as an illustration. God said, make a request, ask him. Even the worst daddy walking on the earth ain't going to let his little brat child come up to say, Dad, you better. Watch yourself. Watch it. Look, look, look. <laughs> I done messed with some dads. They, they start reaching for the belt already. <laughs> they had that response. What? <laughs> because you reverence the Father. You ask the Father. You don't demand the Father. You don't command the Father. He was here before you were. He put this world in place. He knows exactly how things should work out. Don't be trying to demand God about anything. You humbly ask him. And then you thank him in faith, knowing that he's going to do something great. Verse 7 says, then, then, then you will experience God's peace. Now, this peace is different than the peace of God, peace with God. Peace, peace with God was when you were an enemy, you trusted in Jesus, now you have peace with God, you're no longer an enemy. This is the peace of God. Look at what it says. This peace of God, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's go back to verse 6. It said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Folks, worry is a waste of your time. It's the fruitless mental activity where a believer tries to figure out what only God is working out. I have learned that the way God works out things is not always the way I thought the way things should have been solved. I'm looking for God to come this way, and he done came that way. I'm looking for him to come through with, 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 with money for a car, and he put a bus route by my house. He don't always work it out the way I want to work it out, but he will work it out. Joe Pace and the Colorado Mass Choir sings these words. They say, so you're having problems. You don't think you'll make it through the day. You've tried everything you know, and nothing seems to go your way. As you go to the Lord in prayer, remember the simple groove. Let all your, leave all of your burdens there. Get back, step back, and watch God move. Watch him make a way for you. I don't know about you, but I've had to see God do some things. I was like, okay, God, don't know how this thing's going to work out. I'm about to just watch you do your thing. God, go ahead and do that. Work that thing out because I have no clue how it's going to get worked out. I've also learned not to be presumptuous in my prayer. Oh, can I talk for a second? To rid my life of anxiety, I need to pray God's promises, right? Standing on the promises, what the saints would say, not my earthly presumptions. Presumptions. I need to stand on what God has really said and not what I want him to say. What did God say, not what I want him to say. God honors his word, not necessarily our wants. 
When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, this is what he said. The instructions were to commit them to his kingdom come, his will be done. Not your kingdom come, not your will be done. Saints, we need to have the mind of Christ when we pray. If Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not what I want, but what we, got, we can't be presumptuous in prayer. We can't believe that just because we want something so bad and God loves us so much, he's going to hook us up. That Lexus that you laid hands on in the parking lot in the name, in the mighty name, matchless name. Even brought your anointing oil. The silver one is mine, the silver one is mine. Not being presumptuous in prayer, that just might not be for you. That house in Carrollton, oh, help me somebody, really might make you an idol worshiper. That electronic toy that you might get caught up into cyberspace trouble might not be for you. Can I preach today? That, 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 that woman's husband needs to stay her husband. So you need to stop praying that he will stop being the husband so you could be, he could be your husband. Somebody help me in this house. I'm saying we can't be presumptuous in prayer. We've got to pray what God told us to pray, and we'll see the victory and the result when we stand on the truth of God. Now going from verse 6 to 7 in the text, you'll see uh, it says, Thank him for all he has done then you will experience God's peace. Remember your past blessings. Remember your past blessings. Begin thanking him for what he's already done for you. Instead of having a pity party, why don't you throw God a praise party? Yeah, yeah. And instead of being down in the mouth, why don't you start worshiping God no matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter what you're going through. Like, the, like, in, like, like in the video, at least get to practice it. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's not cussing. It ain't nothing wrong. It's not illegal. It's not anti-Christ. It's good to say. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. 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 How many of y'all ate this morning? Yeah, yeah. How many of y'all got here safely this morning? How many of y'all got family here with you? How many of y'all put your trust in Christ and he saved you? Wait a minute. How many of y'all put your trust in Christ and he keeps you? How many of y'all have done some and he still keeps you? After you said yes. <laughs> Am I the only one in the room? <laughs> Why don't you start giving God glory? Start thanking him for how he brought you out of that mess, how he came through on that exam when you got your degree, how he brought your wayward child home instead of going down to the jail to get him, how he opened up the way for employment when your resume said you weren't qualified. Somebody need to remember what he's done yesterday. We need to stop worrying, wasting our time, and start praying and looking back at what God has done and start thanking him for what he's done. Before you know it, your worry will turn to worship. You will have a peace that comes over you that, would, that, that, that when you really mean, you'll really mean it after that. You'll be saying, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Not what I want, but what you want. When you begin to pray and stand on the truth of God and trust God no matter what. The Bible says it's a unique kind of peace that defies human understanding. It's the peace of God that becomes a guardian, a protector, a powerful fortress around your heart so that you won't pass out and go crazy. You won't lose your mind, the Bible says. Others around you will be in amazement as they watch you go through what you're going through and you still have peace of mind. You, they be saying, boy, if I had to go through that, man, I'd, I'd have lost my mind. How do you do it? And you stand there with one foot here and one foot there and say, I'm standing on the promises. The same God who loved me yesterday is the same God who loves me today. Yeah, the storms are raging, but I know he's a, he's a God that can bring me through. And they, they wonder how in God's green earth. Are you making it? 
because you have a confidence of what he has done. You have a trust in what his word said. And no matter what the outcome is, just like the Hebrew boy, I'm going into that furnace. And if he delivers me, he delivers me. But one thing I know, I'm always going to be with him. And once you know, God will show up on your behalf. Get my other, my other little clip ready. Now, now I, I just had to bring this, up, this, this song up. This song has been going through my head, and I was talking to Craig. We talked about, uh, should we play it? Should we try to sing it? I said, no, this, it's too complicated. We'll never be as animated as Bishop, uh, Bishop Bobby Hilton. And uh, I, I want this phrase to get into your heart and into your mind. And so that when you go through something and you, you got to remember your past, I want you to remember one thing. Somebody say this. Say, God, God did, did that, that thing. God did that thing. Get something in your mind when you, were, when you was worried about it. You didn't know how it was going to come out. You had a struggle. You had a challenge going on. And God came through. God did that that thing with your child when it, when it, when it was at the pediatrician and said, well, we don't know. We, we don't exactly know yet. We got to take some tests. And then when it come back and then they say, you know, everything is clear. God Listen, listen to me. When, when you got down and your covers was almost bare and wasn't nothing there, you had no money in the bank and you didn't know what you were going to do, you heard the doorbell ring, opened up the door, a bag of groceries on your front step. When he came through for you, when they said it wasn't going to happen for you, it don't matter what the problem is. Hallelujah. Now you let that song, let that song soak into your spirit. Now I, I, I gave you, I, 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 I'll share with you a YouTube clip in the city. And so you can listen to that thing, put it on your phone. And the next thing you know, the problem come up and they say, I don't know how we're going to get, God did that thing. But you don't understand no money in the bank. God did that thing. <laughs> Come on, let's look at point number two. Point number two. I want you to replace humanistic principles with God's promises. I want you to replace humanistic principles with God's promises. What do I mean? A lot of times we put on our mind all these things about how we're going to work things out, figure them out, get them all worked out. And those are humanistic principles, you all. And what we need to replace in our mind, retool our mind, Romans 12 says, renew our mind, is with God's promises. Let's look at uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Let's read that from the New Living Translation. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters... One final thing, after he told us about trusting God and remember what he did for us in the past, and you're going to get this great peace that's a guardian over your heart and your mind. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on what is true. He gives six things here. What is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Verse 9, keep putting into practice, that's continuous, keep putting into practice all that you have learned and received from me and everything you heard and saw me doing, then the God of will be with you. I'm trying to get you peaceful up in here. I'm trying to get that troubled heart into a peace, peace position. I'm trying to get that person who's frustrated, flustered, and don't know what to do to settle down and say, God will do this thing. Here's the big idea of verse 8 and 9. Here's the big idea. Put godly things in your mind and then obey those godly things. That's not complicated, is it? Put some godly stuff in your mind and then obey those, that godly stuff. Put godly scriptures in your mind and then apply the godly scriptures. You see, too often we got all other kind of stuff in our mind and we need to have God's word in our mind so that we can walk around confident. We can walk around secure. Why? Because we have God's promises in our minds. In computer terms, we would say it this way. Garbage in and you get garbage out. I'm convinced that we struggle in our faith because we spend more time with self-help books TV talk show counselors, and expensive, hyped-up, high-profile seminar speakers that break your wallet than we do with the eternal, never-changing, always accurate, ever-powerful Word of God. If we would just take a few more moments 
in our day than we normally do and spend in God's word, I'm telling you, you'll begin to see a difference like you've never, ever experienced. I thought about this, and the, and the Holy Spirit controlled me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I'm not telling you not to take medicine. Is that on tape? Make sure I'm on tape. I want to make sure it's right. Don't, I'm not saying don't obey your doctor, don't take your medicine. But I'm just curious. that how the, back, in the, back in the day, you might have saw a bare aspirin commercial. You know, then Tylenol came up and did his thing. But now they got all these kinds of things. They got Paxil. They got Haldol. They got all this other kind of stuff. And, they, and they're telling you, tell your doctor you need it. I'm going to go tell my doctor, yeah, I'm, I need some, uh, I need some, uh, some um, um, Paxil because I'm going through a rough time. I'm not telling you not to take your medicine. Please hear me hear what I'm saying. But I am saying if you take God's word and begin to apply it in your life, you begin to see a peace that Paxil cannot give you. Hear me what I'm saying. Hear me what I'm saying. Obey your doctor. Do what your doctor do. But definitely obey God and do what God tells you to do. How are you going to put trust in a man more than you put trust in the God who made the man? I know they ain't popular preaching, but I ain't trying to be popular. I already got my wife. I'm good. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. For that. Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 says, keep putting in to practice. Keep putting in to practice. Could it be that the reason why we are so full of worry is because our mind is empty of God's promises? My brothers and sisters, all we need to do is get back to Bible memorization, which can be used for meditation, which sets the foundation of faith for your emancipation from your tribulation. You're going through tribulation. You're going through trial. But you need to start meditating. You start memorizing God's word. and med Don't you know that worry is simply meditation anyway? You're just meditating on, on how you're going to figure it out. You're sitting there thinking, oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Gonna you ain't got to worry about what you're going to do. What you need to do is start trusting God. Get a Bible verse, start memorizing it, start mauling it over in your mind, and, this, and let that be the foundation of faith for your emancipation from that tribulation. You've got to stand on the promises that do not fail. God is telling you to replace the problem in your mind with his promise. Then step back and watch God move. Tell somebody that God did that thing. Somebody, tell somebody right now. Yeah, some, some, of, some of you are new to the Bible. So let me give you a few Bible verses that you can get started with. Uh, you can look them up in your favorite translation, copy them on your index cards, or put them on your smartphone, make a pop-up calendar reminder, or whatever tool you have to help you get them from print into your brain, into your heart, into your life. Amen. And oh, by the way, there's plenty of apps for that. What am I talking about? I'm talking about memorizing God's word. Coming down to the end, we're about to hit these string of scriptures and, 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 and call this a day. Listen to me. You need to know some of the promises because maybe you haven't been spending a lot of time reading the Bible uh, as you should, and you haven't spent a, a, a considerable amount of time. You don't know what the promises is. In your tool belt, you got about one good promise. So I want to hip you to a few more. I want to give you some more so you can look at and put some more in your tool belt. I've, I've listed them for you in the bulletin. I've given you the tra translations that I'm using so you can follow along. But I'm just wondering, when we get done with every verse that I read, can we say something like, God did that thing? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and see, you're talking about it. You're talking about it about tomorrow, but you're talking about it today like it's done. See, you're speaking those things as though they be not, as though they are. You're trusting that God is going to come through because he says he's going to come through. And so you're just simply rehearsing. You're simply getting ready, saying, God did that thing. Now, if you think that that's positive thinking, no, that's biblical preaching. In verse 4 of Philippians 6, it said, thank him for what he has done. You are to thank him while you're worrying, while you're praying, rather, instead of worrying. So let's look at some Bible verses. I want to give you some promises. Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him, pay attention to the text. Thou will keep him in perfect what? Peace. You got trouble in your life. You got trouble on your mind. Can't sleep at night. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect what? Peace. 
whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Somebody say, God did that thing. Absolutely, absolutely. How many nights, how many times have you had a troubled night, but you didn't know how you were going to make it, couldn't go to sleep, and then the next morning woke up feeling good and refreshed, and said, ooh, how did I get through that? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says this, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I, me and Carla, we were talking about this. I said, I said, baby, I was thinking about getting a trash can, putting a cross in it, right? And then, you know, having, having some paper in it, and then uh, uh, um, uh, uh, just say something like, uh, I got laid off. The Bible says, casting all your cares on the Lord because he cares. Y'all try to be cute. Y'all want to be like, here you go, Lord. <laughs> you can do something with that, you know. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 said, casting, hurling, thrusting, put it all on Jesus. Get it up off of you. Come on, walk with me, somebody. Get it off of you. Get it on to him. He can do something. My knucklehead son up in Ohio. This sciatica that I don't even. My impatience and my. My mama, 80 years old, way in Youngstown, Ohio, having problems, I can't help her, and she called me crying. First Peter 5, 7, casting all, not some, not a few, but all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties on him because he cares. Listen, you may as well go ahead, throw him on Jesus and get a good night's sleep. He gonna be up anyway. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. You may as well go ahead and get some sleep. Say, God, you got that right. I'm going to sleep. I'll catch you in the morning. I wake up with a praise. I wake up with a hallelujah. I wake up with a shout because I know you got that thing. Casting all your cares on him. Pastor, I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to get that. Because he cares for you. Here's another one. Proverbs 3, verse 24. I'm so glad God showed me this. I'm so glad God showed me this so many years ago. I've been telling people this all the time. You know, some people tell you, just go get you, uh, the, the doctor say, take a, take a few pills and call me in the morning, right, when you can't sleep or whatever. Now they're giving you all kinds, you got sleep aids and all these other kind of aids. And Come on, walk with me, somebody. Come on, let's keep it real. Here's what the Bible says. Take, take, one, take, take a Proverbs 3.24 and get a good night's rest. Better than a Simmons beauty sleep. Better than a certain mattress. Better than one of them blow up, them blow up matches and all that stuff cost ten thousand dollars. Take a Proverbs three twenty four and say hallelujah. When thou liest down, come on somebody. When thou liest down, it takes faith to even get in the bed when you got the problem and you're worried. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Come on, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, when thou lie down, thy sleep shall be. Jesus is giving sweet sleep. I don't know who need it, but you ought to stand on it. You ought to claim it because God can do that thing. Come on, let me run. We got to get out of here. I got I to get, get through the text. Let's, rush, let's, let's read through. Matthew 11, 28, 30. Your Savior is talking here. He says, come to me, all you are weary and heavy, carry heavy burdens. I will give you what? Circle that on your paper. I'll give you some rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find what? Circle that on your paper for your soul. Rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and the burden I give you is light. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and to give you a hope. Somebody say, God did that thing. Psalm 23, verse 4, it says, Yea, though I camp out, yea, though I hang out, yea, though I stay in, yea, though I'm stuck in. Is that what it says? Yea, though I what? Walk where? No, you're not staying in the valley. It's scary, sure enough. It's hard right now, but you're not staying there. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because thou art with me. You see, where Jesus is, you are, and if Jesus is with you, everything is all right. I'm running out of time, but let me, listen. When, when, the, when the disciples were on the boat, not, not, not Jonah's boat, but when the disciples were on the boat, and they were on the sea, and the storms came up, and that storm got crazy, and the boat started swimming and switching and going all around, and they were all scared. They're, oh, oh, what we going to do? Oh, my God, look at the problems. One of them had a notion. I believe the Holy Spirit said, listen, you're listening to me, right? Because the rest of them are not listening. You're listening, right? Go wake up, Jesus. The boat was going crazy. They were on the boat. Jesus was on the boat. They thought they was about to perish, and they forgot wait a minute, the master of the sea is hanging out with us today. I'm trying to tell you, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death because God is with you. Jesus is with you. And so they went down and they said, Jesus, don't you care that we're about to perish? He said, wait, 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 hold, hold, hold up. Who about to mess with my boy? Sea, wind, stop. In fact, he used these words, peace. Your heart might be fluttering right now. You might be having trials. You might be going through rough times. You might be sad and depressed, and your heart feels like it's an ocean wave of storm. I'm here to God tell you that God can speak to your heart. Peace be still. Peace be still. Stop running around. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to go crazy. Peace be Let me finish. Let me give you a couple more. I'm like, I got to get out. I'm one of those kind of preachers. On my page, I got to get off the page. Let me, let me go. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I can do what? Come on, walk with me, somebody. Remember the girl in the video? Yeah, yeah. She, she had a little bit of faith. She had a little bit of faith. But then when God said that big thing, like, oh, hold up. Hold up now. I don't know if I trust you just like that. I can do how many things? I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the circumstances, but the Bible says you can do how many things? things. How? Through Christ, which strengthens you. I'm giving you promises to stand on so you can replace worry with worship, so you can start pouting and start praying and start praising God and be victorious because you know God is going to do that thing. Philippians 4, 19. Here's what Paul says. He says, but my God shall supply. Circle that, circle that, circle that. My God shall supply what? All of your need, oh, let me preach for just a second, not your greed. It doesn't say greed. All of your, that's right, not all of your wants. The one thing I love about God is he don't give me everything I want. Thank you, Lord, I praise your holy name. I want what I want, don't get me wrong. I'm about as, I'm about as normal as the rest of y'all, probably a little worse. I want what I want, but I, I love that God won't give me what I want because some things, if he gives me what I want, it would take me away from him. It may hurt you. I might damage other. I might lose my mind. I might start acting like it ain't no God no more. So God don't give me everything I want, but hallelujah, he gives me everything that I need. All right. But you might want to start with these last three verses. And I, what I'm asking you to do is memorize these. Take these and start memorizing them. Because you can do them while you're in your car. You can do them while you're on your job. You can, you can use them while you're uh, laying in the bed. You can use them while the commercials come on. You can use them wherever you're at. Begin to memorize the scripture. Here's, three, here's, here's the last three I want to give you. And uh, I don't know. If you want to shout, you go ahead. But I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to encourage nothing just for a show. But it ain't nothing wrong with saying hallelujah, praise God on his holy word. I'm not trying to set that thing up either. I'm not. I'm not. Here we go. <laughs> Because I might shout, and I just, you know, if y'all want to join me, go ahead. All right. 
Malachi, here's the, because now, now I'm getting you to focus on God. You ready? <clears throat> Malachi, verse 3, uh, verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6, and the first part. It says this. God says, I am the Lord. I do not change. If God helped your mama, if God helped your brother, if God helped your cousin, if God helped this broken down preacher, if God helped your neighbor, if God helped them, and he's your God, he's your father, and he loves you and has his best for you, he does not change. That ought to give you confidence that he's going to take care of you. Somebody say, God did that thing. Numbers 23, verse 19, you got to know something about this promise keeper. He's not a promise breaker. He's a promise keeper. Every promise he makes, he keeps. He's never failed. He's got a 100% track record, never fallen off, never failed, never come short. He's true to his promise every time. Numbers 23, 19 says this, God is not a man. Thank you, Lord. So he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He has never spoken and failed to act. He has never promised and not carried it through. Let me tell you what worry is. Worry is calling God for the believer. Now, if you're not a believer in Christ Jesus, you better go ahead and put your trust in Jesus so you can get on this peace ship, right? Because if you don't have Jesus, go ahead and worry because you're bound for hell. That's the truth of God's word. But God doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to be in heaven with him, but you got to do it his way. Put your trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Listen to me. Worry for the Christian is calling God a liar. You just read where it says God does not lie, but when you worry, you say, this is too big for you, God. You can't handle this. You can't work it out. I need somebody else because, God, you don't have the resources. Let's go home with this last one. Paul said these words. Me and Pastor Rice grew up in the church with Pastor Frost. And Pastor Frost would end the sermon in, 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 the, in, the, in the church services with this passage of the scripture that, that impacted me so. It's been with me since uh, for years and years and years and years. Look at your paper if you have it. Look on the screen if you need to, wherever you have to do. But listen to it. Paul has talked about praying for the family before that, but then when he gets to verse 20, he says, Now, now, to him. Who is able? Go ahead and circle that able. You, have, you got a God that's able. We're not talking about God who can't get it done. You got a God who gets it done. He's able to do. What is he able to do? Exceedingly. Yeah, you, you've asked for this. He can handle that. Abundantly. Above all. There it is again. All that we ask or think according to what? The power that works in us. And once you realize that and get a hold of that and hang on to that, that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. There's no need for me to worry. There's no need for me to be fretful. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Verse 21 says, to him be the glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, she understand what I'm saying. Once you realize that God is going to work that thing out, the Bible says, to him be the glory in the, ch by, in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me teach you one last thing before I get off, get off the stage. You know what amen means, don't you? Amen means amen, so be it. That's it. That's the end of it. Got the stamp on it. Gavel's been dropped. That's just the way it is. Somebody say, God did that thing. <laughs> 